like we're going nowhere, lads. <laughs> we're going off the map. Baby, 
misma luz Duele que pico llama Al cine Wana na na sha na 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 Yeah Thank you. <laughs> day two or day three or they, they can't even remember. We are going to some hidden island. The boys. It's supposed to be big barrels. We soon shall see.
You can't know what you want when you continually kind of working, working, working. You need to slow down. Start with a hobby and see where it leads you. My name is Roshanna Gray. I live and work in Cape Point. It's deliciously situated in between a mountainside and the ocean. Very elemental. It gets very windy and very hot in summertime and um, very cold in winter. I would say I was floating. I was first working in retail, and then after that I was working quite extensively in the food industry, traveling from my home, which was a box, in a little car, which was a box, to a little office, which was a box. But really it was counting down the hours until the job was over, and then my life would begin. That wasn't living for me. She didn't know a lot about wild plants initially, moving here. And, but what she's done as well um, is sort of opened up everybody's eyes. It all started with growing vegetables in my garden. Until a Japanese cyclist came to visit. He ended up staying for 99 days. Every so often he would go on his bike and he would drive off to the beach and he would come back and shortly afterwards I could smell these amazing cooking smells coming from his little campsite. He showed me the joys of the sea vegetables. He basically stood out there on the beach with me and he said, look at this, like all of this food, this is all amazing sea vegetables. Why is nobody eating them? From then on, my curiosity was sparked. Very interestingly enough, seaweeds change their nutritional value depending on what season it is. So, for instance, sea lettuce, which is a beautiful green seaweed that grows in the little intertidal pools, it's full of vitamin C in summer and vitamin D in winter, which is pretty perfect. It's designed for us. My interest in learning more of kind of tracking the edible landscape grew to such an extent that I couldn't keep it to myself anymore. When I first started, everybody thought I was completely crazy. And how could you possibly earn a living from going and collecting your food from the wild and, and showing people how to eat these weeds and things? And that's how the workshops were born. We take people down, it's like completely immersive, interactive learning. Um, and I call it the full circle of learning, where basically you go into the rock pools, we have our like educational with your toes in the water, and then you have your exploring time where we set everybody free on the rocks to go and be free and be childlike and just have fun and explore um, all the different uh, rock pools. It's, it's quite beautiful to watch the process that happens throughout the workshop of gaining knowledge in the rock pools. They'll pick something, then we'll go and prepare it. We'll process the ingredients. They'll start to be able to identify all the different species, start to call it by its name, forming a little bit of a relationship with these, these ingredients. Take something that looks rather awful at first and you don't 
ever consider eating it and to transform it into something that is just so mouth-watering and really also healthy that was for me just a turning point. I basically learned everything I know from Roshana. I'd studied to be a chef and so it made so much sense to find a way to utilize ingredients from from the wild, from my backyard. Ali Grekel, which is a herbivora sea snail, was boiled in seawater, minced and mixed with nasturtium mayonnaise, sesame oil, red onions, herbs, and they were served up straight in their shells. Using the soft seaweeds like sea lettuce and rack that you can eat raw, we made sushi and decorated them with edible flowers. And then sitting down at the table with all this beautiful food that everybody has harvested and created into beautiful dishes, then it's like a, a really, it's a magical moment of sitting down and appreciating everything and then enjoying it together. I'm proud of the fact that I've taken an idea and a thought, a very arty, romantic one, and it's kind of blossomed in its own way. Kind of changed my outlook on life. Don't not do something and then regret it. What's the worst that can happen? Spread your wings. Training in the gym is important for your game because it improves your resiliency and reduces your risk for injury. The moves translate to tennis because the game exists in three dimensions. You move forward, backwards, you move side to side. Sometimes it's quickly, sometimes it's slowly, but these moves are gonna help develop your ability to get to the ball faster. Hey, I'm Coach Dave. We are here at the Adidas Gym. We're gonna take you through six exercises you can do off court to improve your tennis game. I've got Kofi here who's gonna help us demo the exercises. The first move is a squat jump. So with the squat jump, the goal is to develop explosive power that you can use up, down, side to side, front, back on the court. First, he's gonna start with his hands up to the sky. He's gonna throw his hands down to the floor, throw his hands back up to the ceiling as he jumps as high as he can, and then the landing is soft, full, flat foot, hands back, hips back. So let's start hands up, throw the hands down, explode up, soft landing, and reset, reach. Throw the hands down, explode up. Nice soft landing. Perfect, one more time. Down, explode up, soft landing, and that is the squat jump. This next move is sprint to back pedal. We're using lines, and if you don't have lines, I want you to set up cones five to 10 meters apart. You use this move to develop your ability to change direction forward, backward on the court. We're gonna start with Kofi in the athletic base stance. He's gonna sprint forward three steps, plant foot slightly turned in, and he's gonna backpedal hard and fast. Let's start athletic base position. Ready, sprint, plant, and backwards. 
This move is a continuous lateral bound. The goal is to develop explosive strength laterally, which will help you directly on the court. What I want you to do is spend as little time on the ground as possible, exploding laterally as far as possible. So Kofi's gonna start loading on the left leg. He's gonna bound to the right leg as far as he can and back to the left. Continuous, we're gonna do a few more reps. Soft landing to stop. And that's your continuous lateral bound. These next moves are called Y's, T's, and W's. We use them to develop upper back and shoulder strength. These are gonna help your tennis serve and your fore and backhand strokes. To do these, we're gonna shift the hips back, hinging at the hips, chest down towards the floor. And we're gonna bring the arms up into a Y position, squeezing the shoulders, thumbs to the ceiling, bringing it back down into a T position, focused on rotating at the shoulders. And then a W position, bent elbows, focuses on trying to get the thumbs as high as possible. And those are your Y's, T's, and W's. This next sequence is a three-way lunge. We're gonna use this move to develop lower body strength in three directions. Your ability to decelerate, to explode, and to change directions. First move is a forward lunge. Kofi's gonna step forward with his right foot, landing on a flat foot, exploding back to the start position, stepping out into a lateral lunge, keeping that foot flat, exploding back, and then reverse lunge. You can load this move up with dumbbells or kettlebells if you are an advanced trainee. This next move is a plank with rotation. We're gonna use this to develop strength in the shoulders, torso, and hips, and specifically the obliques, which are gonna help you absorb force in your racket swings. We're gonna start in a plank position with the thumbs touching, feet slightly wider than the hips. Kofi is going to rotate his left hand to the sky, following it with his eyes, and he's gonna end up on the sides of his feet, rotating back down, match hands, rotating right hand to the sky, following with the eyes. Slow and in control, left up to the sky. People should prepare their mind and body for training by recognizing that consistency is key and that you don't get everything from one workout, from one meal, from one night of sleep. It requires long-term commitment. Because the stronger you are off court, the more likely you are to be able to express that strength on the court and making you a better athlete. The Kalahari's got its own draw. It's vast and it's forever. You've just got to get into those sand dunes on your own and there you're going to find a lot of solitude. It can seem like a place of massive emptiness, but you suddenly find five, six different animal tracks right there. There's this huge amount of life and when I'm on a filming project, I really like to try and live like the animals do so that I can experience the hardships that they're going through. I want to see wildlife in a totally different context. And that's really, I suppose, what draws me to the Kalahari. It's the, the vastness and the openness. I really enjoy being able to see these massive distances. Those are great images and things that stick with you.
September 12, 2001. It's the day after the terrorist attacks on New York and Washington that killed thousands of Americans. In New York, stunned rescue workers search for bodies in the smoking rubble of the World Trade Center. And in Washington, President George W. Bush condemns the attacks, which also badly damaged the Pentagon, as acts of war. Our country will, however, not be cowed by terrorists. 1943. During World War II, Nazi German paratroopers rescue Benito Mussolini, Italy's deposed dictator. They free him from a hotel in northern Italy where his own government was holding him prisoner. Mussolini rules a Nazi puppet state in the north until he's killed near the war's end in Europe two years later. 1960. John F. Kennedy faces critics who question whether being a Catholic should disqualify him for the White House. The Democratic presidential candidate tells a group of Protestant ministers in Houston, I am not the Catholic candidate for president. I am the Democratic Party's candidate for president, who happens also to be a Catholic. I do not speak for my church on public matters, and the church does not speak for me. Kennedy becomes America's first Catholic president when he narrowly defeats Richard Nixon that fall. 1953. Wedding bells for a future White House couple as Kennedy marries Jacqueline Bouvier in Newport, Rhode Island. 1977. In South Africa, black student leader Stephen Biko dies while in police custody. His death triggers a global outcry against South Africa's racist apartheid regime. And 2003, in Nashville, singer Johnny Cash, the man in black, dies of complications from diabetes. The country music legend was 71. Today in History, September 12th, Ed Donahue, The Associated Press. Welcome back in our studio and in today's news, 